Okay, now I'm live. Finally. Hey guys, three deltas from here. Uh, actually, now that I remember, just going to start recording. Might as well. Uh, yeah, so, um, welcome back. I'm doing Genshin again. Um, yeah, uh, 1.4 came out like a couple days ago. I had stuff to do like on the Wednesday, and then I was like, you know, I'll stream on the Thursday. I had stuff to do on Thursday. So we'll stream on Friday. I had nothing to do on Friday, so here we are. Um, yeah. Uh, as such, one point, or uh, 4.1. Let's, uh, do it. No one's going to come after us for anything. Even without Silver standing guard, we can just completely relax. Why don't we stay and rest up here for a while? Even machines and Fontaine need to stop and recharge now and then. So the goal for this is to get through all the story content for uh, um, uh, four point one, and maybe do a bit of exploring afterwards. This time, I will make sure to do all of the story content. Instead of, oh shoot, I need to break it up into two different streams. Oh, come on! This place isn't that bad. Besides, how often do we get to stay in an actual base? Uh-huh. But we could be up above. No. <laughs> With clean air. Instead of sewer. Oh, fine. Remember that detective story Paimon read before? Well, the author is about to release a new book, so Paimon wanted to buy it as soon as it came out and have a quiet place to read it. Yippee! Then it's agreed. Come on, let's get some sleep. We'll need to be up first thing in the morning to get in line and buy a copy. Technically, you could go by yourself, Paimon. What do you mean someone's busy? What do you mean I have to do s I have to go do stupid daily commissions this time instead of, uh... At the very least, it's not character quests. At the very least, I don't have to go do character quests. They finish your daily commission so that I can continue on with the story. <laughs> sucked into the story quest. I just need to finish the daily commission. Interesting time, Paimon. We are just here to do main story quests. We're not going on a side tangent. Just 
gonna move the chat a bit. And yeah, just gonna grab the achievement. Back down to the surf we go. Paimon didn't expect that style at all. You know it's a detective novel? It's also like a... a no! Paimon just... Excuse me, but do you know if the Traveler and Paimon are lodging here? Hello? Huh? Yeah. Who are you? Doesn't recall seeing you before. Wait, you're not here to give us trouble, are you? Oh, we're traveler and Pima. A blonde traveler and a chatty little fairy. <sighs> Looks like I found the place. Good thing I asked the Spina di Rosula. Seems they sent me the right way. Did they though? Hey, what do you mean by chatty? You will not let me speak, Paimon. What was that? Or you, you're the definition of chatty. It's an honor to meet you both. I was sent from the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nourilat wishes to see you. It seems he has something important to discuss in person. Alright, then we need to infiltrate the place. We're a thing. Something like that. He wants to see us again already? Yes. I am not privy to the details. It would be if you say now that I've delivered the map. Thanks. We haven't left the room for a few days. Like another person? No. Not again. <laughs> okay, hold up. Just gonna also check the story quests. Okay, so yeah, just um, yeah. Uh so Don't you just love it when you try to complete a bunch of story quests and then just so that, you know, you don't have to, uh, deal with them, these guys? There can be no excuse for this thing. I see. So you believe that this the demon is just died by the phantom weasel? Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The phantom weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but... However this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? Oh, oh, hey! What a coincidence! Fancy meeting you here! We make a quick sh Charlotte. Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you call us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this... Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. 
known only as the Weasel. Nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. So it's Lenny. Wow, cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Yeesh. So, uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. Hmm. So, this is the warning letter, huh? But three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance! Or a cop account. Those happen. What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again! But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop! And I'm going for it! Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? doesn't want to get kidnapped. Well, he'd have to go through you first. You would stop him, right? Okay. The oh, people have spoken. It's clear that I saw me an emergency food. about the phantom weasel's reappearance. Let's see. I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something exclusive. Why, talk to my own weasel? Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Lenny! Magic, magician, Caesar! <gasps> the Phantom Weasel! That's it! Let's go interview Lenny! Man, it took you this long to put that together. You see, the original phantom thief Caesar was a magician too. And what do phantom thieves and magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Or maybe Lenny's the phantom weasel. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. Time to do your story quest vlog. Wow, get through Mr. all this. Magician, how did you know which card I picked? Oh, it's simple. Come closer and I'll let you in on my secret. 
Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax, because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh boy, you really can read my mind. Of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right, got it. Uh, hey. Why, hello, we meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Well, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. Yeah, you're gonna guess that. Hey, you it's Phantom Weasel. You're here to talk about Rome Shoes. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro expressions. That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess. Uh, don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? Wow! Cut it in one! Is this more of your trickery, Edward? No, it's because you're it's here. Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the latest news about the Phantom Weasel. So, Linny, what are your thoughts on this? Hmm... To be honest, it makes me angry. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. Mm. Ah, what are your chances? <gasps> Wait a minute, you don't think he's after you, do you? Or it could be that he is some. Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the phantom weasel's identity before the show begins. Mm. Really? So what you're saying is... We might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief? Wow, this has exclusive written all over it! To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. Well, you're with the Fatui. You're being far too modest, Linny! I think your magic tricks are even more insane! than those of a thief. Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. 
Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower. Just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. Yeah, well, let's see it disappeared. That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. Wow, I wonder where it is. <laughs> it's right there! But how? You haven't moved this whole time! Probably flicked it across over to me. What an outstanding trick! Sorry, Flinny, it seems that my previous praise was woefully inadequate. Clearly, magic is the superior art form to theft. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Neat. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower-related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a Lumidu spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the phantom weasel is caught by then. There's nothing else. Uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no. So, Lenny, are you gonna? T <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little. Well, you feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as magician's assistant? Technically magicians too. Power, you're not a magician. Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done. Shall we go for it? The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel, hmm. Well, that'll make things more interesting. It would mean that the weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. Yep. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiancée Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely it. Let's go. Stop talking to Lenny. We have work to do with the new bullet.
there goes Genshin. Ah, uh, hold up. Where? There we go. Be right back as uh, Genshin loads up again. Okay, Genshin do be back, so let us continue. <laughs> This do be taking a while to load up again. I did send someone to fetch you, but as for what I'd like to discuss next, well, I still have some reservations. Given that we've already made the trip here, you should just tell us. Bet you need us to help you with something, right? I do indeed have something I'd like to ask you to do. However, you should wait until after I tell you the details, then decide for yourselves whether you'd like to help or not. The situation is this. It has come to my attention that the Snezhnayan harbinger known as the Knave wants a diplomatic meeting with you, correct? I heard that she was originally from Fontaine, but for her to suddenly arrive here and abruptly request such a meeting like this, 
I sincerely advise you to refuse her invitation outright. Hmm. I'm sure you're aware that her purpose is most likely related to Child's recent predicament. We convicted one of the Snezhnayan Harbingers in a court of law, but we have yet to provide any form of detailed report on the matter. This does indeed provide an opportunity for Snezhnaya to put pressure on us. I believe we should adopt an evasive stance until we can provide a proper explanation and have a preliminary plan on how to deal with the matter. No, we shouldn't. I think we should agree to the meeting. Oh? Well, you see, we are the ones that owe an explanation. If we keep putting off the meeting, it could easily result in the problem escalating, right? It's like... like a fight between two friends. If they don't agree to see each other and talk in person, isn't it possible that the friendship could end entirely? Though diplomatic relations between Fontaine and Snezhnaya could be considered as friendly, it is only superficially so. You wouldn't go so far as to say that our nations are friends, as you did in your example. It was just an analogy. An analogy, okay? Moreover, even if we were to talk in person, if we don't have sufficient information prepared, it is quite possible the result wouldn't be restored relations, but a complete falling out. Hmm. I don't think we should overthink those possibilities yet. <clears throat> Even if the logic of the Divine is not immediately apparent, its wisdom will only be revealed with time. Uh, won't they try to steal your Gnosis? Actually punch you in the face. I did that with Venti. Besides, you'll be at the meeting. If any problems do pop up, you'll have no problem navigating them. I must clarify that interacting and communicating with people outside of court is not my cup of tea. It seems you think too much of me. But more importantly, when did I agree to join the meeting with you? <laughs> you mean you won't come? No, 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 that, that won't do. I can't go to the meeting alone. You have to accompany me. I must take you with me. Lady Farina, could there be something else regarding this matter that is being kept from me? No, not at all. Look, I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine, Thosalor, the god of justice who is loved and adored by many. Yes, but he's the judge. <laughs> You're just the jury. So I only hope that justice will be served in this matter. Don't overthink it. I'll go find someone to arrange the meeting. <sighs> Though it could officially be considered a diplomatic conference, I prefer to see our meeting today as an ordinary tea party. Mm. I assume you see it the same way, Miss Farina? Ah. Should be the fourth. Mm. Lady Farina? Uh, oh! <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Just like you said, a tea party. <laughs> I should thank you for providing the pastries. They look delectable. To make this tea party even more lively, I've invited someone else to join us today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Monsieur Nuvillette. I was born in Fontaine, so naturally, there is no need to introduce the nation's revered Udex to me. Hello. The pleasure is also mine. First, I would like to thank the two of you. I'm often away on business outside of Fontaine, and I'm told that the children of the House of the Hearth have been well taken care of by you. Uh... Oh, I'm not referring to when my children, Linny and Lynette, were falsely accused by you. Please don't misunderstand. The children of the House of the Hearth are often misunderstood, perhaps due to the reputation of the Fatui, there's no getting around that. All I meant to say is that Fontaine has been stable in recent years. The people are well off and the children lead happy, fulfilled lives. 
That unique. That is something truly worth cherishing, and no one wishes to disrupt such peace. Oh. Now then, you have come regarding the matter of child, correct? Well, yes. It appears the ever-busy Yudet Nuvillette doesn't wish to waste time with diplomatic pleasantries and hopes that we can get straight to the point of our talk. Yes, as you surmised, understanding child's situation is indeed one of the goals of this trip. Who the heck is trying to join me? As Snezhnaya, as well as Fatui Harbingers, Child and I have always been colleagues. Were anything to happen in Fontaine, each of us would serve as the other's attorney to resolve the issue. Mm. So now, in my capacity as his attorney, I request that child be turned over to Snezhnaya. We have a responsibility to cooperate with Fontaine and resolve what has happened to him together. The rules governing attorneys only apply before a trial has concluded. Since a verdict has already been rendered, we see the case as settled. I apologize for being unable to grant your request. An outright refusal. Very well. I respect all the rules of Fontaine's courts, just as I respect you as Chief Justice. Uh -huh. Okay, why don't we back up a step? You don't need to transfer Child to us. I only request to enter the Fortress of Meripede to see Child and confirm his condition. It's not like you couldn't even manage to fulfill a simple request like that. Right, Miss Farina? Uh, um, about that. Mm -hmm. The Fortress of Meripede has always been completely autonomous. Even we have no authority to interfere there, and diplomatic issues do not suffice as an excuse. However, if you absolutely must confirm the situation of the Harbinger, I have a proposal. The knave showed up already? Well, Linny did say that father will be returning soon. We didn't even know that Linny was from the House of the Hearth at the time, so we kind of overlooked that information. Yes, thank you for your kind advice. I'm well aware of the situation. Like I also thing. noticed that Lady Farina acts a little odd and unnatural whenever I bring up matters related to the knave. Could the knave be threatening Lady Farina or something? If that were the case, then why wouldn't Lady Farina inform me? And what means could the knave possibly have to twist the arm of an archon? Hmm. So maybe that's not very likely. Even though Verena can act a little weird at times, she's still an Archon. In reality, this problem is even more thorny than it appears. According to reports from the Fortress of Meripede, Child recently disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Did he escape? The details are still unclear. We cannot rule out an escape, but there have also been no reports of him outside of the Fortress of Meripede. And then he's Special somewhere. guards oversee the fortress, and its internal systems are extensive. Combined with the special characteristics of the surrounding terrain, an escape should not be possible. I suspect that there's something else behind Child's disappearance. I was only willing to share this information with you because you are friends of Child, and it is my duty to see justice done. Mm. So this is what you wanted to see us about before? Yes. I would like you to go to the Fortress of Meripede and investigate Child's disappearance. This was my proposal during our meeting with the Knave. Rather than allowing her to intervene, I offered to send someone to find out about Child's situation and report back to her in detail. The Knave did not seem satisfied by my proposal, but she still agreed to go along with it for the time being. Her words were, We will talk more once we have that report. So that means we bought ourselves some time! Firstly, you're already acquainted with Child. Your eyes may discern relevant details there that others would miss. Mm -hmm. And secondly, is the consideration of the unique nature of the Fortress of Meripede. Isn't it just Fontaine's prison? I would not define it so crudely. The Fortress of Meripede is not affiliated with the court system of Fontaine on paper. 
It has always existed as an autonomous entity. Early in Fontaine's history, criminals were punished with exile, not imprisonment. Even today, sentences against convicted criminals still include exile, just as before. The fortress of Meripede may seem like a prison, but it should in fact be regarded as a gathering place for exiles. All we do is dispatch guards to keep watch and help maintain security, but we have no right to get involved with any other matters. Although I do have a personal relationship with the administrator there, neither myself nor the courts have the right to be directly involved with the investigation, no matter how serious the grounds. Oh, Paimon gets it now! That's why you need us to conduct our own investigation as a third party, right? Correct. I will arrange false charges against you so that you may secretly investigate inside the fortress during your detention. This will save us a lot of unnecessary trouble. So, are you two willing to accept my proposal? Yeah, no matter how you look at it, it seems we're the best choice. Alright, we hereby accept this difficult task. Uh, reluctantly. Mm-hmm. You two have my sincere thanks. This matter is of critical importance to Fontaine's current situation. Also, I hope that both of you can keep this operation a secret. We will rendezvous at the Fortress of Meripede's entrance on Erinaeus once you've prepared yourselves. I will arrange for someone to take you inside. <coughs> prepared ourselves? Uh, is there something we need to prepare? Perhaps you could enjoy a good meal and have a nice bath. I'm afraid that living conditions inside the fortress are nothing like those on the outside world. All right! Even though we'll be there on trumped up charges, we'll be in prison for real. Uh, on second thought, is it too late to back out? Please do not worry. Since you are sacrificing both your time and quality of life for the sake of delivering this report, you will be compensated according to the highest standards permitted to legal staff, regardless of the outcome. Now that's more like it! Come on, traveler, let's go eat the best meal we can find! We'll eat so much that we won't need to eat another meal for a whole month! Your treat! Uh-huh. Are you leaving now? In that case, please take this cake as a token of my personal gratitude. Nick. We are going to need a big meal. I'll take 5,000 pontus. That cake was pretty good. But as soon as Paimon remembered that... Now that Paimon thinks about it, we've always been super careful ever since we arrived in Fontaine. But here we are, about to willingly send ourselves off to the Fortress of Meripede. Hmm. Maybe this is what they call fate. <sighs> Let's just try our best to investigate. 
investigate everything quickly once we get there. I'm a oh, what is that I hear? Is it the taste of a breaking story? Hey, you can't hear a case. And what are you doing here, Charlotte? Oh, don't remind me. I invited an eyewitness to a case to eat here, and I was planning to get some great material out of him. But he didn't even show up. Ah, oh, calm down, calm down. This is nothing new. Sadrunas, you should be used to this by now. And as long as you can score some juicy tidbits from the traveler, yep. you might still be able to recover the cost of the meal. Uh, you know we can still hear you, Charlotte. Mind. It's nothing. I just heard you mention the Fortress of Meripede. You didn't commit a crime, did you? Please tell me all about it. No way! We would never! We're just going there to... Uh... Um... Yeah. Oh no! Hannah almost forgot that Nervalette told us to keep it a secret! Huh? You're being arrested for that? Oh, but now that I think about it, I suppose that's not completely unreasonable. That's pretty despicable. Almost as offensive as committing theft. Yeah, fine, Mom. Oh, you mean Paima really did something that serious? Sorry, Paima really messed up. Uh, in that case, it's nothing particularly newsworthy after all. Oh, how disappointing. Right, there's still a chance. Uh, since you're going to be at the Fortress of Meripede, would you be willing to help me gather some material for a story? Maybe. Um, about that, uh, Pyra doesn't think we'll have any time. No, no, it's, just... no, it's nothing difficult. All you have to do is think of a way to get some time face to face with the Warden of the Fortress. He was awarded the honorary title of Duke in Fontaine. Sounds really cool, huh? Only those who have made significant contributions to the nation have been conferred this title. It's incredibly rare. Hmm. Neat. On top of that, the Fortress of Meripede has never been under the jurisdiction of the courts. Practically nobody, including journalists like me, knows anything about the person in charge there. Oh, if I could write an ex exclusive article about him? You make it sound easy, but it really depends. Of course, I wouldn't ask you to do it for free, so this meal is on me. Uh-oh. Sure said that, Charlotte. Alright, you got a deal. We'll do anything you want. <laughs> then it's settled. The food should be here any second, right? Huh? Wait. You made a mistake, just Charlotte. How much did you order? <laughs> the fool. Well, guess we have nothing to regret now, so let's get going. So where's the purpose? Uh, Alright. Got a tower over there, right? Come on, Genshin. Load for me.
how to be done. Okay, then we just climb up, talk to Nubilet, and hope I have enough stamina to do that. Perfect. Alright, Nubilet, we're ready. Is this where the entrance is? You have come, just as promised. Yes, this is the one and only entrance to the fortress of Meripede from Herenius. Careful, you may want to step back a bit. Oh, so you have to go down from here? Is the prison underwater? Yeah. Utilizing both the barrier of the water as well as the fear humans have of the depths, the fortress of Meripede is naturally the perfect place to confine and guard criminals. But do not worry. It is not nearly as frightening inside as you may think. Uh, Paimon hopes you're right. Oh, and there's one more thing. I mentioned that I have had personal dealings with the administrator of the fortress, Rithesley. He's a very shrewd fellow. All right, Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, we heard about him too. <laughs> He's that Duke, right? Correct. He is the highest ranking manager of the underwater prison. Even though you are going there to investigate at my behest, it would behoove you to avoid any confrontation with him or any of his subordinates. The Duke rarely ever leaves the fortress of Meripede, but that does not mean he is not privy to all that is happening inside and outside the fortress. He is quiet, but not unaware. All right, that's about all the time that we have. Don't worry, we won't. Good. I'm here, Monsieur Nervillette. These two are the newest convicts, I presume. <laughs> like we would try. Please follow me, you two. I'll process your paperwork for. Um. More elevators. Are we already underwater now? Uh, ah. a long. So this is what it feels like to be a criminal in Fontaine. That could be worse. You two seem to be taking this pretty well. <laughs> it's rare to see convicts in such a good mood. you make the trip down here today Monsieur Nervalet personally requested I escort these two convicts I suppose he was concerned others might not be up to the task <laughs> well now aren't you the lucky one must be nice to be on good terms with the big shots like the chief just well have you tried service with a smile who knows it might help your professional reputation <laughs> Yeah, right. As if. Every criminal comes through here looking miserable. How can I smile with such a toxic work environment? No time on. Be nice. And even if I did smile at them, the convicts would probably just think that I'm some freak getting some kind of twisted enjoyment from their pain. Oh, she's got a point. Well, I've finished transferring you. You two will register here and Marette will go... <sighs> Yep, I'll take it. Okay, let me see. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? 
Present. I can shoot water. Let me confirm your charges and sentence. Let's see. You two are charged with eating a cake specially prepared for the Archon by a Snezhnayan envoy without the Archon's permission, thereby incapacitating the political center of Fontaine for a brief period. Sentence, 45 days? Huh? L Lee! Just looking at the charges, it seems you two are capable of causing some serious trouble. Um, you know, it had nothing to do with that cake. It was all Paimon's doing. And considering how fond Lady Furina is of sweets, this crime is tantamount to trying to assassinate the Hydro Archon herself. You flatter us. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> anyway... We still need to finish processing you before you can enter the Fortress of Meripede. Please stand in front of the board over there. I'll take your mug shots with my camera. Oh, all right. But be sure to catch Paimon's good side. Paimon, you do not have a good side. And we're done. Thank you for your cooperation. Next, someone will be along. Huh? Sweet birth. You two are the new inmates, right? Follow me. Oh, okay. Hi. Save it. Not like I'll remember your names. Move it. <laughs> Just wait. We're going to save Fontaine. Then you'll have to remember our names. Now we're truly in the Fortress of Meripede. So, are you one of the guards here? Um, is there anything we should be careful of while we're here? Don't drop the soul. Uh, did Pine- Why should I tell you anything? What's in it for me? <sighs> this is exactly why I can't stand you fish. I wouldn't even be doing this if it weren't for the credit coupons. Yeah, you're not a guard. Credit coupons? All right, seeing as you're not the annoying kind that's getting dragged in here crying and blubbering, I guess I can tell you a few things. But next time, it'll cost you some coupons. Cool. Mora means nothing here. Here, we use credit coupons. Coupons can get you almost anything in the Fortress of Meripede. Desires? Fulfilled. You want power? No problem. Coupons can even change fate itself. What, you're telling me that I can... Can I buy a Gnosis down here? So, credit coupons are a currency that can only be used here? It's not as simple as that. Like Moret said, everyone gets a chance at rebirth. No matter how much money or power you had before, it means nothing once you set foot inside the Fortress of Meripede. You have to start over and earn your coupons. Interesting. Everyone starts from the same place. And you have a chance at a new, less terrible life. I guess that's the real purpose of the coupons. They symbolize true fairness and true justice. And this is also exactly why so many criminals 
choose not to return to the outside world even after they've served their sentence. Right. Oh, so that's what the portraits of Maripit is like. Huh. Paimon was under the impression that it'd be more like a prison. It certainly ain't all sunshine and roses here, but it's also not the worst place to be. You'd better take a good look at the scenery now. It'll be the last chance you get for a while. After being away from the sunlight for so long, even the terrifying depths of the sea start to feel like home. It just stops feeling oppressive, you know? Yeah. Oh, I'm actually an inmate like you two. Welcoming newcomers is a job I've picked up to earn some extra coupons. Again. Yeah, no coupons. I told you enough for free. Any more? So all you care about is Mora. Almost there. It's down through here. Okay, that's where we are. Got it. So, we're going even deeper now? Because how deep down are we? Very deep. It's like a metaphor for your previous life, isn't it? You still committed the crime of eating cake. Or whatever. Let's take a moment to rest and plan our next move. Thank you, Dilo. Your insight is very helpful. <laughs> Entrance to the fortress of Ma huh? It looks like there are other new arrivals too. Oh, they sure don't look happy. Uh, maybe we look too relaxed for fresh convicts. Oh, right. We're on someone else. If we're discovered, even Nevelet might not be able to rescue us. <laughs> hey, don't scare Paimon. Uh, look, I don't really know you. And I have no idea what kind of crime you've committed, but... Uh... Someone important? Now's not the time to worry about that. Anyway, it's over there, so... You just go on over there by yourselves. Have... Fair enough. What was that all about? Uh... Wait a second! Are there usually so many garden rats around here? No. Prisoners number 7459 and 7560. Welcome. Well, no need to be anxious. These Gardamex aren't here to attack you. In fact, they're here as your honor guard. When I heard that you were friends of Monsieur Nervillet, I had the Gardamex come and wait in formation. Wait, you know about our connection with Nervillet? The seafloor isn't as cut off from the world as you might imagine. However, I'm afraid that I know nothing more than that you are friends of the Udex. And, as you can see, committing a crime means being sentenced here. Even if you're friends with the Chief Justice. Quite fair. The, the Duke! Uh, greetings, Your Grace! L lovely weather today, isn't it? Oh, greetings, my good fellow. Well, I'm willing to imagine that the weather is as good outside the sea as you say it is. <laughs> Ah, how great it would have been if only the fortress of Maripede had been built on the coast, huh? 
It would have been so convenient to enjoy a nice chat in the sunshine. Ah, my profuse apologies. I just got so nervous when I saw... So this is the gig. The Traveler and Paimon, correct? Mr. Deacon here was responsible for your welcome. Ah, I see. In that case, I regret to announce that Deacon here has just missed the best opportunity in his prison career to be promoted. Oof. <laughs> I, uh, I admit that I was only thinking about the coupons. I'm sorry to have disappointed you, Your Grace. I originally... I had no idea you two were big shots who were worthy of speaking with His Grace. Losing out on such a big opportunity because I couldn't see past my own nose. Plenty of time ahead, Deacon. There'll be more opportunities. Well, I believe that concludes the introductions. We've already taken enough time here. Yes, Your Grace. I'll take my leave now. <laughs> she's like, Deacon, she's Please, like, follow me. Bunch. To make you feel more I'll miss stuff. show you around the various facilities of the Fortress of Meripeak. I hope it'll help you adjust to life here. He's going to personally give us a cure? Huh. No wonder Charlotte's so interested in him. He's one of those mysterious types. All right. Grab the viewpoint. There's no need to be so reserved. The label of criminal is nothing but one of many identities. And being criminally inclined here at the fortress is just one of many ways to survive. Uh, is it really okay for the warden to think like that? We're real criminals, you know. What if we're too difficult to handle? <laughs> well, then maybe you'll be able to carve out a name and a place for yourselves in this underwater world, hmm? But, before you go in swinging, please remember that in the Fortress of Meripede, it's better to not cause trouble for yourself, or for the guards. Now, we've arrived at a very important place. The Coupon Cafeteria. You can come here and claim one welfare meal each day. Welfare meal? You mean, it doesn't cost anything? That's right. Criminals are essential to fortress operations, so we must guarantee that they at least have the basic means to survive. Hmm. But that's not how it was. Back in the day, it cost your reward coupons just to get a cup of water here. For fish like you who just arrived with nothing, you have to go to work hungry until you earned enough coupons to eat. It was only after His Grace became the administrator that we got the free meal rule. Now everyone gets a square meal every day, even no good slackers who've never picked up a wrench in their whole lives. Nobody starves to death here. In the Fortress of Meripede, credit coupons are the only currency, and everything must be purchased. In some sense, you could say using the coupons is a form of trade. Yeah. But trade is always conducted by people. So if we want trade here to prosper, we need everyone to work hard and live their lives. If nobody could even afford a meal, then the whole fortress would be up in arms. Now, so, rather than saying that we're giving everyone a free meal here, you should say that everyone's hard work has improved the living conditions in the fort. Your Grace's reasoning is correct, but what I said is also true. Whatever the case, hard work is rewarded here. You'd be hard pressed to find anywhere else as fair and reasonable. <laughs> right! I don't see your point. By that logic, this place doesn't seem so bad after all. Oh, wait, no. We should have dropped our guard so quick. Uh, let's continue this way.
This place is known as the Pancration Ring. Sometimes we have criminals who have more energy than they know what to do with. Their daily work So, instead of leaving them to their own devices, we've provided them with this dedicated venue. This way... Pancration matches? And you can earn extra... But I must warn you that your sentence will be extended if you fail to restrain yourself and end up seriously injuring or killing your opponent. So, did you say... No, actually. I just granted approval for the organizer to use this area to build the ring, and I collect a portion of the proceeds in return. Of course, the fees are also quite useful. Oh. You mind if... Sure. Ensuring personal safety, maintaining the arena, and resolving any conflicts that arise. Why? Oh, no, no. I was just wondering if that's how you paid for everyone's welfare meals. A reasonable guess. I see you have a talent for entrepreneurship. Oh, you hear that? That is something you can discuss between yourselves later. Let's move on for now. I'm a fight. We got up for no. Fair enough. Your Grace, good morning. What time indeed. Time waits for no one, so it's best to keep an eye on it. Ah, uh, my, my apologies. Jeez, that guy's so nervous he almost forgot to leave. <laughs> Sheesh. <sighs> Sorry, forgive my manners. These are the dormitories, which is where inmates sleep. The guards will inform you where your bunk is later. In the Fortress of Meripede, criminals usually spend most of their time in either the production zone or the sleeping areas. The production zone? What does it produce? Is that where we'll be working? Not necessarily. Though working in the production zone is the most reliable way to earn credit coupons. If you have other skills, you can skip your shifts to earn them in other ways. The fact that the Fortress of Meripede has continued operating completely autonomously is proof enough that most people are willing to work honestly and earn a stable income. As for what we produce, many of the clockwork machines seen all over Fontaine originate from our workshop. Therefore, the Fortress of Meripede is not only a place where criminals serve their sentences, but also a giant machine factory. There's no need for me to get into specifics about the production process now. You'll experience it all firsthand when you report for work tomorrow. <laughs> Let's move on. The tour continues over this way. So funny. scared me there. I didn't expect to see you here, uh, Your Grace. The only thing you should be seeing is the work in front of you. Stay focused and keep up the pace. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we're asleep. Um... Oh? Is something the matter? Uh, <laughs> it's nothing. Simon's... <laughs> Funny. Like, ah, yes. The knave needed someone to come in to, uh, you know, 
make sure that time on or er, that a uh, child sign. Your Grace, what are you doing in the infirmary at a time like this? Oh, oh no, you didn't injure yourself, did you? No. Not yet, unfortunately for you. But thank you for your concern, Siegewing. Oh. <laughs> then you must be here for those two. Allow me to introduce you. This is the infirmary, and Siegewing. <laughs> Hello, new faces. They call me the head nurse, but I actually handle all the nurse oh, you're a all by myself down here. Interesting. Since you seem to have some rare downtime with no patients, perhaps you could. Oh, then these two must be some important. Thank you. Your presence will. Oh, so the tour guard is a. I believe I've already covered the primary aspects of life here in the fortress. As for your work, they'll. I seldom conduct tours, so why don't you just ask? I. Uh, well, this is. Then let's head back to the coupon cafeteria. Maybe a meal will help you think up some questions. You should at least try to be excited. Our free meals are actually pretty good here. Can I buy new weaponry though? It'd be interesting to get a new sword from here. It actually has nothing to do with luck in this case. I had a word with Walsy, so you didn't have to draw lots like everyone else. Oh, you mean, yes, what you get to eat depends completely on your luck. You could say that it's a distasteful little game that Chef Walsy likes to play here in the cafeteria. I'm a new it! If criminals got to eat tasty food like this every meal, the- Excuse me, did I hear you mention Nervulet just now? I've been wondering how he's doing. He seems healthy no matter how you look at him. But he works so hard all the time, so it must be really tiring. It sounds like he hasn't changed a bit. Looks like you can stop worrying so much, Sejuine. Oh, that's good. But I still feel like it's been too long since I've heard any news about him. No news is good news. Maybe next time I've got something to discuss with him, I can invite you to accompany us. Hmm? But isn't the Fortress of Meropede independent from Fontaine's court system? What do you two have to discuss? Well, we provide all kinds of mechanical products for official use, and some essential goods have to be obtained from the overworld, so we naturally have to stay in touch about this and that. Monsieur Nivellet's character is unimpeachable. No matter the question, you can discuss it openly and freely with him. Talking with him feels quite effortless. In light of that, I am quite willing to go out of my way to show respect and accommodate him. Neat. In fact, right now, I'm treating you two as guests invited by Monsieur Nivellet. But unfortunately, I can only do so until the end of this meal. After this, you two will just be inmates here. You're very welcome. Well, your new life awaits. So, Lenny is here, which means we probably are going to see the nape at some point. Hundred percent, Lenny came out here to break out child. Because uh, something tells me that um, <laughs> Miss Nape does not have any regard whatsoever for the court system of Fontaine.
Traveler and Paimon, right? Listen up. As new inmates, the only thing you need to worry about is what to do and when to do it. Don't make any extra... Your bunks are right over there. Follow me. So this is where we'll be sleeping from now on. Oh, Paimon can't believe this. Uh, by the way, Traveler, we saw, even though the Duke didn't say it too directly, judging from what he said at the end, it seems that he was only well. We are criminals, and Paimon did eat that cake. Hmm. Is it possible that he knows we're here on a mission? Or is Paimon a... Yeah. I don't think so too. Maybe something like, "Hey, I have my eyes on you." So, yeah, you're right. Uh, and besides, the Duke said that he was willing to go out of his way to show. So, we at least need to try. But, Paimon, you mean? Yeah, that's what Paimon was thinking too. Fortunately, based on his attitude, it looks like the Duke sees Linny as just another inmate. We were so hard to help clear Linny and Lynette's names, and yet we turn around and BAM! He's... Oh, right! Linny and Lynette are from the House of the Heart. They work for the Knaves, so they could be here to investigate, too! Huh? Oh, it's... Hmm... It looks like a magician's prop. Let... It was nice to bump into you again. Let's cut... What in the world? It's really like he's greeting a buddy on the street. Paimon thought he'd write something important. If you say so, we can ask him a... Neat. Hey, you're finally awake. Well, it's Paimon's first day as a prisoner. Last night, Paimon dreamed about getting interrogated by the guards until... Pa hey, come on! It's just a dream. Hey, lazy bones. What are you still doing here? You don't want to s- uh, sorry! Man, I'm surprised I can still use my wind glider. <laughs> Jump down though. You must be the catch of the day. Looks like... Yep, we just arrived, yes? Don't interrupt me when I'm... Yes, sir. Listen carefully to my instructions. I don't want any mishaps. Every machine here... Working around these machines can be very dangerous. Do your job well, and you can eat in the cafeteria after your shift. Get sloppy. Anyway, the Fortress of Merope doesn't want to lose a single one of its machines. And it also doesn't want to waste... Your job is to use the machine over there to process widgets. Watch carefully, and make sure you step on the pedal at the right time. If the machine gets jammed, then give it a little maintenance with your fist. 
Here, take this. Bring me the process widgets, and I'll give you some credit coupons in exchange. This one is tolerable. Though since the pro Alright, I'll pass you for now. And we'll count up how many credit <sighs> Paimon's exhausted. Ugh. Even though Paimon star, he probably just finished. Find that footstrip there. Hey, over here. <laughs> oh, you oh, you scare so easily now. It <laughs> you little. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Lynette, you're here too. You two really are inseparable. That's right. My brother simply can't stand to be away from me. Uh, it's not just Lynette. Fremine is also here. Oh, you mean that diver from the House of the Heart, right? Huh? Now hurry up and tell us. How did you end up as criminals this time? We fought so hard at court to prove you were innocent, but now it looks like our incredible court battle is for nothing! Sadly, even the teeniest of things can land you in prison these days. I put together a street performance and used the popularity we gained from the Opera House incident to attract a big crowd. And then? Next, I invited several audience members to participate in the show. And then, with the entire audience watching, their wallet suddenly disappeared. My brother was charged with theft, and I was charged as his accomplice, having assisted him in his crime. Uh, it really isn't that bad. The missing wallets are all in the leftmost drawer of the Maison Guardianage's big filing cabinet. We just need to see how long it takes to discover them. Yep, we should be released then. In terms of the magic trick itself, I think... <sighs> Leave it to Lenny to magic himself into prison. Indeed. Last time I hid my identity from you, I promised that I... So I don't plan on keeping anything from you this time either. At the moment, we were instructed by the father of our house, the Knave, to come here and conduct an investigation. <gasps> Told you so! See? As for what we're investigating, perhaps you haven't heard, but the Fortress of Meropede hides a secret. <laughs> Some even say that the entire fortress exists just to protect it. <laughs> the House of the Hearth has been investigating this for a very long time. But recently, 
all of our informants, including the ones that had infiltrated the guards, suddenly vanished and have not been heard from since. We believe that this is a direct provocation, and it's the reason why we came here. Father has somehow managed to confirm that Bosalorus does not have Fontaine's Gnosis. Huh? How did she manage to learn information that important? Father has her ways. Many of them are beyond our imagination, and we've never had the chance to see her at work. But we trust her conclusions. It was this information that led us to suspect that Fontaine's Gnosis might be in the fortress of Meripede and is related to that secret. So it's all about the Gnosis again. Well, that's about it from our side. How about you two? Did Monsieur Nervulet send you here? Bingo! The man has been applying a lot of pressure. She wants to know what happened to Child, so he came here to investigate. Uh, Traveler, are we allowed to tell them? <laughs> you don't need to worry too much about that. She's just asking for a report on Master Child's predicament as a means of pressuring you. Father used this situation as a pretext to negotiate with two high-ranking officials in the court of Fontaine. She actually just wants to be able to make concessions on this matter for gains elsewhere. Almost like a bargaining chip. Sometimes you need an excuse to do things you otherwise couldn't. And a harbinger is more valuable than you might imagine. Of course, it's not a complete farce. If we do manage to find out what happened to Master Child too, then diplomatic relations with Fontaine could improve, and Snezhnaya might even be able to adjust its stance a bit. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like we're the only ones who actually care about Child's situation? The relationship between the Harbingers must be as bad as ever. I wouldn't go that far. Father just has different standards than we do when it comes to what can be sacrificed for an advantage. Uh, by the way, I have a suggestion. Why don't we team up? Even though we have different objectives, we're both here to investigate the Fortress of Meripede. It would be more efficient for us to work together. As you know, the House of the Hearth has many reasons to seek the Gnosis, but our highest priority remains resolving the prophesized crisis. You can trust us on that. Hmm, see, I told you. Is that so? Hmm. Lenny seems to be thinking pretty hard. Of course he is. Lenny has been looking forward to a chance to reach an understand, or I should say, we were really looking forward to teaming up with you this time. Lynette, just tell them everything. What? It's okay to open up a little. <laughs> Very prudent of you, and consistent with your behavior since we first met. <laughs> That's reason. I was prepared for the worst, but you were actually more agreeable than I anticipated. <laughs> All right, then. There's no time to lose. I have... Since Lynette and I arrived here, our investigation uncovered the fact that the Fortress of Meripede has a forbidden zone. Most people just clammed up and wouldn't talk, but after asking the right questions, we were able to confirm the existence of the forbidden zone from the guards. You should be aware of that while you're investigating. A forbidden zone? <gasps> Could that be where child is- Good. That's the most suspicious thing about the fortress that we know of so far. We have a few other unanswered questions, and we'll be in- Oh, look at the time. You two must be hungry. You should go to the coupon cafeteria and get something to eat. Oh, that's just what Paimon wanted to hear! Paimon, stop- Neat.
I suppose this will do. Kidding. Today's meal is nowhere near as good as last time. Oh, who knows how long of ah, forget about it. But life here doesn't seem all that bad. Other than the foreman being kind of mean. You think so, mate? <laughs> if I had a seems you fishies still haven't learned your lessons from your life up on the surface. If you take things at face value, then by the time you reach a dead end, you won't even know how you ended up on that road in the first place. <laughs> I like your attitude. Everyone's been telling you to just follow the rules and not cause any trouble for yourself. But what they don't tell you is that the rules aren't exactly what they pretend to be. The rules for being a prisoner. The truth is, this place has a lot of hidden rules. Huh? Hidden rules? Not everyone knows about those rules, but whether you know them or not, once you break one, you might encounter something even worse than death. Of course. And I'd say that just disappearing would be one of the better outcomes. Oh, you mean that if there really are hidden rules, then child... Uh, in that case, would you tell us... <laughs> Come on, mate. Paimon understands, but... Yeah, yeah, I know. Not like I'm going any... Moreover, your new fish. Freshly caught. And completely out of... And usually around the rag and bone shop. Just call me V-Doc. He left. Just like that. Huh. Do you think he's just trying to scare us into buying fake info? Yeah. It might be a good place, but like he said, we don't have any coupons. Ah! We were so busy talking, we almost... Okay, so back to dormitories, get some rest, work some more, get more coupons till we've got enough to buy info on hidden rules. Interesting.
Interesting. Are you awake, traveler? Huh? What's wrong? You seem to have something on your mind. Did you dream about is that even Oh, child's vision! So you had it with you this whole time? Yes. Maybe the vision connected child's consciousness to yours. And our investigation has its first major. So what did you see in the dream? Do you know where child went? Huh. Oh, what's more important now is that it's the start of another new. What's the plan for today? Let's go. It's time to. <laughs> Look who decided to show up. Get your butts in gear and get to work. Time's a wasted. Good, here you go. Cool. This feels like it's going to be a while. Shift mates, I saw you finished your works. Oh, hey there, we've seen you before. Here's <laughs> that's right. The name's Rowan. This past few days, I couldn't help but notice I've been working here for almost 15 years. Even the foreman Grainville always calls me chief. Whoa, you've been working here a long time, chief. Hey, not so loud. <laughs> if there's anything you'd like to know, just all right, chief, we'll be sure to come to you first. Did you just ask about? <laughs> Pretty sharp for newcomers. You've already heard about the rules, huh? Who'd you hear it from? Hmm. All right. Seeing as I'm the one who came over here, you're already calling me. Ch Truth is, you two keep working like this, you might be putting yourselves in danger. Huh? Wait, there's even a rule about that? Well, it's usually not that easy to break one on accident. The conditions of the hidden rules are usually pretty specific. But once you do break one, bad things happen. If you work continuously in the production zone for three days, and if all you do besides eating and sleeping is just work, then something bad will happen during lunch on the third day. Huh? Like what? <laughs> if I knew that, then I wouldn't be... You mean, even you have never tried working... There's actually a legend about this rule. They say that there was a worker who worked way harder than me. He was both efficient and eager on the job, and most other workers couldn't hold a candle to him. One time, he tried to test his limits and worked as long as he could. Then during lunch, he disappeared into thin air, as if he'd evaporated. Later, some people went and asked some of his past friends about him, but they said, never heard of the guy. What the? How could that happen? Unfortunately, we were assigned different production zones. I never Wait, are you thinking that it was... Huh? Oh? You... Uh, listen, kid. This ain't the kind of thing you should be curious... Yeah, I agree with Chief here. Do you really want to try? Garbage. 
garbage. Ooh, it looks disgusting. Oh. What would you like to do this afternoon? Sure, if we're not going to work. Then... I would like to try to trigger as many events as possible. Because eventually I will probably break in a hidden rule and someone will definitely come after me. But I'm also the traveler, right? I have archons on my side. No person can hold me. Besides, the ring is definitely a place to uh, start with. Considering that's where the child was. Right? Yeah. Oh, you must be the traveler, huh? Sorry, mate, but uh, competitors as strong as you are prohibited from participating. Not even convicts value their lives, don't they? But we have a game here that'll let you show off your strength, and you'll even earn. And if we lose the. Of course. That's the cruel reality facing every competitor in a play. Okay. Great. Let me. The targets in front of you will pop up one after another. You'll need to hit the targets in the same order that they popped up. If you can complete a few rounds in a row with no mistakes, then you'll win credit coupons. But the second you mess up the order, you'll lose. Game over. The game costs 300 credit coupons to have it go. So thanks for your patronage, mate. <laughs> I'll be. They weren't exaggerating about how strong you are. Aw, looks like we won't get a chance to sleep in as long as we're here. Let's... Of a new day. My mom feels like we're getting used. What do you have planned for us? Right. We just need to keep at it. Look who decided to show up. Get your butts in gear and get to work. Time's a wasted. Oh? What's with suddenly wanting to Sure. Well today.
Paimon doesn't even have the energy to talk anymore. <laughs> oh, Paimon's exhausted. <gasps> Wait a sec. Now that Paimon thinks about it, oh, Paimon feels a shiver going down. But it doesn't seem like anything's changed at all. And we made it to the coupon cafe. Are the so called hidden rules only a rumor after all? Well,. What? What? What in the world is this? Is this some meat? But it looks and feels so bizarre. What kind of chef would be? What do you think is going on? Is this the bad thing that Rowan was talking? No, stop right there, Pine. And get to you. Hey, isn't that Wolsey over there? Hey, Wolsey, have a moment. Hmm. What is it? The meat in our meals. The meat? Oh, that looks perfectly. Uh, how could this? Oh, what should we do now? Wolsey wouldn't even give us the time of day. <sighs> yeah, looks like we have no other choice. Pine what would you like to do this afternoon? <laughs> okay, let's see if we. Sorry, I couldn't help but think of his grace once I saw you. Oh, it's hard to say. Maybe I... Wait, sir. Oh, I'm always indecisive and... What? P please, don't say anything like that out loud. How could you... That's well, a nice bird with the Aramide stoning down here. That's a body bear as well. That's goes down, that's a fighting. This is the one that goes up. Oh, uh, I was injured a bit just now. Nothing major, I think I just pulled... Huh, Paima wouldn't have thought someone as a... Shh. I just knew you would say that. Oh, you mean she wasn't in the inf... Yeah, the rumors say that there's never anybody in the infirmary in the half hour before lunch, and nobody knows where... Huh. Uh, forget it. I can take care of a... Sm Wonderful. I was worried that you'd be busy trying to earn reward coupons all the time, but it's... Paima likes having more coupons. Have you also been investigating the air... No, I was just slacking off, and you happened to catch me. My brother is still obsessed with anything remotely related to the Forbidden Zone. But knowing him, it... Oh, before I... For... Huh? Credit coupon. I've been here longer than you. 
Coupons aren't a resource in particularly short supply. What is in short supply are interesting. Aw, that's so nice of you, Linda. Neat. Additional coupons. So I do want to actually go down. Hey, it's the Traveler and Paimon. <laughs> no need to tease me, okay? I won't trip on the same step twice. Just like His Grace said, paying attention to every little detail is the key to prosperity. Hmm. jump to conclusions. See, we Melazines are a different species, and we see the world very differently from humans. It's very easy for me to observe everyone's condition. All it takes is one look, and I can tell which workers are exhausted. Wait, Melazines can see that? <sighs> yes, running around tending to everyone's health is very fulfilling. But I'd much prefer it if you're all happy and free from exhaust. Take care of your body. Make sure you eat well. Always rest when you're tired. We'll definitely take care of. Up here and here. I guess cart. Hey, look! There's something here. That suspicious guy peeking into the infirmary just now. He must have dropped this. The Melody perceived the world bit. As a result, their sense of aesthetics and beauty. Whoa! This all sounds pretty serious. He sure did his homework. And as for the nope. Neat. Uh, and where we're here? And where we're here. Neat. That is a chest. Hmm. Better than nothing.
stop investigating and go rest? Okay, you should... So after working a few days straight, we got some... Hmm. Has our investigation turned up anything useful recently? Really? <sighs> then it looks like that part of the investigation has hit a dead end. Well, we'll keep... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we can make some progress in our investigation today. Definitely. A lot of crypto bonds. What do you have planned for us? After working here so long, we're really s but doing the same thing all the time can get. Yeah, it's good to. Keep bring a chest open. What is this garbage? What would you like to do this afternoon? Sure. If we're not going to work, then let's go. Oh, back for another try? I hope you brought enough credit coupons this time. All right, then get ready to... Your strength really shouldn't be underestimated. Nobody who values their life would be willing to get in the ring with you. However, you two haven't tried betting on the... Just go talk to Rusama. Buy a ticket for whichever fighter you think will win. But we don't know anything about the fighter. That's normal. Just watch a few matches and get a feel for the fighters. He's got a point. Why don't we give it a try? If we... Huh. Bet at random, huh? Uh... Well, how should I put it? Uh, it's not like you can't do that, but I'd advise you to give it some more thought first. Huh? We shouldn't get too carried away. What's the problem? What? I... Never even picked a boxer before, and you already know about the rules? You're not just strong fighters. Seems you're pretty perceptive, too. Uh, might as well tell you about it, since you already know that much. Plus, I... I think you've got the potential to be one of my greatest customers. Besides, I don't want to risk ever losing a customer like you. Uh, is it that serious? Okay. The hidden rule here is, if you buy both boxers tickets and support them both, something bad will happen the next morning. So the rule is that we shouldn't pick both boxers in the same fight. But if anyone actually did that, wouldn't they be guaranteed to lose coupons? How would I know? Not like I'm... But I've heard a story about the rule. According to the rumor, there was a masked boxer who possessed incredible skill and power. However, in the final match, the organizers told him to take off his mask. And after that, he was never seen again. Some say he died. 
or that he was taken care of by the event's organizers. But every in his eyes, supporting both boxers in a match would dishonor the competition itself. So you mean, it's like, a curse? He'll take vengeance on anyone who does that? No, he was always wearing a mask, like he was intentionally trying to hide- Traveler, do you think that boxer was- Huh? You're not serious. Look, here I was just trying to be nice- Betting on both fighters will set you back about 3,000 credit coupons. If you have enough, then... working here but doing the same thing yeah thanks. easy work so that we can just get some cool pops and keep going Maybe we'll be able to find... Yep. Hmm? Are you two here to buy tickets? Better be... Who are the boxers in the next... We have the reigning champ, Le Grappler, <laughs> versus a contender from the eastern prison block, Demon Horde. Are those their nicknames, or did they choose those names? Uh, since you're new around here, I'll help you out and give you a little suggestion. Even though the grappler is the crowd. Anyway, for this match, I recommend. Huh? Uh, I could tell you're new to this. Maybe you don't quite understand the rules, no? Oh, no need, no need. Um, we're. All right then, if you're. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Shop and take our money. <laughs> Seems we had a productive day. Now it is the morning. Hey, traveler, I'm on. Package here for you. Yeah. The next time you buy something, go pick it up yourself. Huh? A package? For us? Did you buy something, traveler? Paimon's not quite awake yet, so why don't you go take a look? All right! Yesterday we broke the hidden rule and bought tickets for both boxers. Oh, maybe this... Huh? Paimon suddenly feels wide awake. Wait, maybe let Paimon go hide somewhere first. Hey, wait, wait! Paimon killed you and got out of it! Ah! Huh? Uh, let Paimon take a peek. Oh, it's just a small bottle, but the color of the liquid inside looks so wrong. Almost like... All right, that's enough of that. No need to say it out loud. Paimon already knows what you're trying to say. Woo! No way! Get that stuff away from Paimon! Uh, Paimon thinks we shouldn't open the bottle until we figured out what's going... This is probably just sponsor. Time to go. So many regrets. Uh, there's 
no way to send it all out. Uh, who are you? Uh, I I'm not. Of course I'm not. Please. Then what are you? I'm a promoter for Fontico, and I'm usually responsible for promoting our drink products. I thought I could complete my task here quickly and return to headquarters. Oh, a promoter from Fontico? So what kind of problem did you run into? Uh, I'm... After discussing the company's promotional plans with him, he told me outright that my project... However, in light of our long history of successful collaboration, I still tried to patiently explain the details. <clears throat> Let me take a moment and recall his exact words. I'm just gonna stop you there and say no. If anything, I'm saving you time. It seems you don't fully understand the value of credit coupons here, nor do you understand the value of your own products. The former is because you are from the overworld, that's understandable, and I don't... But as for the latter, only someone monumentally stupid, so breathtakingly stupid, that they were completely ignorant of the value of credit coupons, despite living in the underworld, would ever possibly consider... <sighs> anyway... That's how he rejected my proposal, and asked me to come up with another solution, with the condition... Uh, well, he is the head honcho here. Not much you can do about that. We met him too, and could tell that he's the kind of guy that's hard to pin down. Fine, fine. I know, I should just let it go. Yeah, look, it's gonna take me forever. Crazy fools really did it. You well, the next day we received a mysterious package. So it is real. You didn't become cursed or anything like that, did you? Uh, Paimon's not sure. What do you? Oh, okay. Well hmm. Yeah, you two don't seem to have changed at all. But still, I didn't expect you would actually do it. You'd actually throw away coupons like that just to satisfy. Even if we bought tickets like everybody else, it's not like we could hope to earn any coupons. When it comes to things like this, it's always the organizer who makes the real profits. Hey, just what are you trying to imply? The Pancration Ring is an honest business, and we really don't make much from selling tickets. We make so little that even the current tournaments can only be held thanks to funding from the producer of Fanta. So it's the company that manufactures Fonta sponsoring the event? Paimon thought all of this was thanks to the Duke's support. Let's just say it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. They reached out to us first, hoping to promote Fonta products in the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, anyway, you tr symbol on it. Uh, okay, but it's... Oh, <laughs> you're right. Guess there's nothing to worry about then. Let Paimon have a look here. Without assistance from the Fontaine Research Institute, development of the new product, we have no choice but to let the new product undergo the first phase of promotional trials without a designated name or packaging. We will adjust the direct... We have decided to only conduct closed, small-scale trials for the time be... Sure doesn't seem like anything unusual. A company is just trying to... Uh, let's put these papers back where we found... Yep, so uh, that definitely was haunted that we just got. Time to go.
without even All right. But rem oh, just a regular. What would you like to do this afternoon? After working here so long, we're like doing the same thing all the Yeah, it's good to kick back and relax. A mysterious box, a bottle of Okay, so we've been we'd better pick up the pace with our investigation, otherwise we'll never get anywhere. Yeah, let's skip work for Never again. Hey, isn't that B Doc over there? Huh. Ah, seeing you at this time must mean you've already saved up a lot of credit coupons, or at least enough to skip work. <laughs> Impressive. So, now can you tell us about the hidden? Mm. If that's what you want to know. Huh? What are you Leonid and those other pesky broke urchins have all gone to work in the production zone. I wouldn't want them. We get it, just... So, you know those pipes that make strange sounds? Don't ever, ever go near them at night. Even if you manage to avoid the guard. And something even more... A group of cannibals. Cannibals? Every month, they meet a few times in the dead of night. Rumor has it, but what's even scarier is that they have a special proclivity. Since they have no way to dispose of the leftover remains, they have ways to transform them into other forms and keep them in the fortress forever. Uh, Paimon might already know what you mean by other forms, so that's what's going on here. Oh, Paimon's stomach doesn't feel so good. You two look pretty skeptical. No matter. Learning the truth behind dark... I've got things to do, too. Neat. Traveler, can we just trust him on this one? Oh, Paimon doesn't want her blood and flesh entombed here for all eternity? Oh, so that's how you see the situation. Huh. You know, Paimon does... Oh, when will all the secrets end? Hmm, b -Doc isn't here. But the guys who went to work in the morning... <sighs> Just st... Oh. What? What are you saying? You... What are you talking about? Listen, you should keep your nose out of other people's business. Yeah, I know your voice some, from somewhere. Hmm, their attitude sure is suspicious. Like they're trying to avoid us. But if they're being so obvious about acting weird, oh, this is all getting way too creepy for Paimon. So you mean we still need to invest? Thank you. 
What do you want? Criminals like you ought to be work. We just want to ask you, it's, have you ever discovered anything odd? Why are you asking about something like that? Whatever happens at night is... Uh... Well... Right! We really? I see. And now that you mention it, I recall my colleagues talking about something like that before. They say that strange... So, what happens at night on pipe? They just conduct regular cleaning of the fortress's drainage facilities. There are three pipe cleaning days per month. And it just so happens that today is one of the scheduled days. You can try to confirm the sounds tonight if you want. And if... Oh, okay. Then we'll... Now, if that's all, then I'll be leaving now. I advise you not to try anything funny, though. Even if I'm not... Don't worry, we don't want any time added to... Oh, so what do you think about the pipe cleaning days he mentioned? Right, both are a possibility. Hyman knew you would. These are rules, just stupid superstitions. This point. Upper child vision. Neat. Interesting. Traveler, come on, wake up! Oh, it looks like you were just peacefully sleeping, the Paimon. Well, really? So we're finally starting to... Okay, well... The quote-unquote thin rules of the thing. I think I just, uh, thing by these three. I know you. You were the ones we. Huh. You've got guts showing up here. You'd better leave now. Ain't nobody coming here to save you. What you say? Yeah. So what if they were? If you push us, we can make those rumors a reality at any time. Hey, what's the point of all those rumors anyway? I don't have to tell you anything. If you turn around, go back to the dormitories, and act like you never saw anything, then I'll pretend that you never showed up here. Yeah, scram. Nothing worth seeing here. Huh? What did you say? Isn't that exactly what Boss said when he left? Hey, do you know our boss? Oh, we had no idea our boss was such a big... So, did he have you come here to find him? Oh! So your child's crew here? Seems like he had no problem fitting in. 
We're the only ones who heard him say those words when he left that night. So unless he somehow told you those exact... <clears throat> oh. Wow, those dreams of yours... We gave him the business for a while and we'd always give him a hard time when he first came to the fortress. But here in the fortress, he, he was working the longest hours and racking up wins in the pancreation ring. He could always see how amazing he was, even when he was... So eventually, we all decided... But one day... He suddenly told us that he had to find a way to escape this place, no matter the... And as his crew, if the... So, we got to work, and used the hidden rules that were here to make up and spread the rumor about the cannibal rule. We just wanted to give him a better chance of escaping, on a night after the pipes had been cleaned. Oh, thanks to your rumor, nobody would want to come anywhere near here, prisoner or guard. Wow. But, has a child already escaped? Because, as far as we know, the pipe he went into isn't actually an exit. It should be a... It leads to an abandoned factory area. And even if there were a way to escape from there into the sea, we're... But Boss still insisted on... So we told him that we'd pretend as if he never existed while he was gone. And that if he wanted to come back, he should wait for night time on a pipe cleaning day. That way, we could meet him here. So you come and wait here through the night a few times a month just be- Yeah, but it's been so long now. We already know in our hearts that he must- Uh, is it also possible- Nothing could ever defeat boss or slow- Okay, okay. Kind of was just brainstorming possibilities. All right. Keep quiet and follow us. The way up from here has been sealed off. It's impossible. Boss left by going down from here. It, uh, wasn't full of... Later, we came back, hoping to have a look. That's... It's impossible to navigate, unless... Do you think Child got trapped by... Not likely. We all know that Boss was an incredible swimmer. Really? Then have him come investigate. Pronto. It's getting late. We should leave before the... Yeah. We learned a lot of... Interesting. <sighs> when you said you knew a diver, you were talking about Fremenet, right? Ugh. Why is Child Bo Fortunately, though, it's now that we can finally relax. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's morning already? Maybe you haven't heard, but today is the monthly free day. Everyone has the day. It's been a while since we last talked. Have you been making any progress lately? Ooh, today's our lucky day. We have the day. From the sound of it, Lenny has been making. Hmm. We still have some time. Neat. Um. I will be honest, I think I'm going to end the stream here, and then pick up either later today or tomorrow, maybe? Or some sometime in the future. I Honestly, like I've been going for two hours, and uh, I need a break. So, um, yeah, I think this is where I will stop for now. And I will pick this up in a part four, I guess. That, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, or stream even, uh, like, subscribe, um, leave a comment. I love reading those, if there were any. Uh, and yeah, um, that, I will see you all later.